we can rewrite our torque equation actually now in terms of this magnetic moment as simply mu cross b, because remember mu, the magnetic moment, is really just i times the a vector. That's what we use to characterize how magnetic something is. So let's now think about a few moments here. So if we have just a b field going to the right, and we have a current loop that I'll draw sort of in the plane of the board, it's moment, we'll often abbreviate it just moment rather than magnetic moment or magnetic dipole moment, it's often just called a moment. Current goes around, so I know if the current goes around that way, the moment is this way by the right hand rule. Here I have the moment, the same direction as the B field, the cross product is zero. This is the case where you'll have no torque. Okay? That's where it's aligned with the B field. So we know that this thing likes to be aligned with the B field. It doesn't feel any torque in that case. We could also think about, again, the case where it's in the plane of the board. Current's going around like that. I know that because I'm going to draw the moment as sticking out. All right, current's going around, right hand rule says the moment is sticking out. The B field is that way. We do have a torque. Which way? Mu cross B. So mu is out, B is to the right, we have a torque up. Which way is it going to spin? Right hand rule. Torque is up, the fingers along the torque, I'm sorry, the thumb along the torque, and the fingers say it wants to spin that way. And let's think, if it spins that way, this mu vector is going to go like that. It means it wants to get back over here. Okay. So here the torque was zero. It's happy to sit like this. If you turn it to where, the to, where, to where the mu sticks out like this, the torque tends to push it back, back to this situation, back to that condition. So here uh, the torque um, is actually maximum. If you consider up positive, that's the maximum torque you're going to get when these are at 90 degrees, the mu and the b. We could turn it even further. We could turn it all the way anti-parallel to the b field. So now here, um, uh, the i here, I'm drawing it like this is going back. And the mu could be in the opposite direction of the b field. Here, torque is zero, because mu cross b is zero. Their, their, their angle is 180 degrees. But it's different than this case. This is stable. Uh, this is a point of uh, um, a stable, uh, unstable equilibrium right here. Because although the torque is zero, if you get even the slightest little deviation from this position, which way is it going to push it? It wants to push it back over here. Okay? If you let this torque come over to here, it pushes it back that way. So although the torque there is zero, that's not the stable position. This is the stable position. So what we really have here is the potential, we have a potential energy. We have a case where you can be here with uh, uh, no kinetic energy. You can turn it and push against the torque to align it this way. You've actually given it potential energy. And you can release it and it'll turn back to here and it'll have some kinetic energy. So you can go back and forth, just like a charge in an electrostatic field. Now we said the magnetic field doesn't do work, but that was on free charged particles. This is a charge confined to stay in a current loop. That's why we can start to have, um, uh, start to do some work against the field. So let's write then that the potential energy um, of a moment in a uniform B, moment mu, in uniform B, uh, U is negative mu dot B. The potential energy is negative mu dotted with B. So let's see if that makes sense. When mu and B are in the same direction, um, that's your maximum dot product and that's your minimum energy. When mu and B are opposite directions, that's going to be negative and that'll negative will make it positive, that's your maximum energy. And then here is in between. So you can start to think in terms of potential energy again if you have something with a moment, not a free charge running around, but a current loop, the fundamental unit of, of magnetism, basically. One interesting thing about this system is if you apply a torque to something, it doesn't just move and then stop. Okay? It has momentum. 
when we had the uh, square loop in the magnetic field and I switched on the field, it turned and it didn't really stop. It turned until it ran into something. So things don't really just turn uh, when there's a torque to a certain direction. They're given angular momentum. They want to keep going. They don't want to stop. That's actually why compasses have oil in them. So a compass has this little needle that's trying to align with the magnetic field, similar to what we're talking about here. You'll learn about it in the next learning sequence. And if you were just to have that, it would turn to go north, and then it would just swing back and forth with all of its energy. It would basically go from here to here, back and forth, like a mass on a spring, going from kinetic to potential energy. But it has the oil in there to damp it. So if you look in a compass pretty close, you'll always see a bubble, and you'll see some liquid in there. And they wonder, why is that liquid in there? It's actually there to damp the motion. Otherwise, this thing would just oscillate back and forth all the time. So that is the end of the sorting sequence, we were really just wanting to get down to really how does magnetism, how does a magnetic field affect the motion of a charge, free charges and charge in a wire. And we got down to this thing, this magnetic moment. The next sorting sequence, we'll talk about sources of the magnetic field. Where did this uniform magnetic field come from? How did you make it?